one thing that I think is going to help with this section is really to remember that that logarithms are just exponents. The answer to a logarithm is an exponent. So, for example, if I said, um, what is log base 3 of 9? The answer is 2, right? That output is a 2. And we know that because 3 to the second power is 9. Logarithms are asking, what exponent do I take the base 2 to get that input value, that 9? So these answers from logarithms are exponents. And we already know some uh, some relationships with, with exponents as far as arithmetic is concerned. Like, for example, if I had 3 squared times 3 to the 5th, that is uh, 3 to the 7th, right? Like, I can add, when I'm multiplying, I can add those exponents. Uh, and similarly, when I'm taking a power to a power, that would be 3 to the 10th. I would, I would multiply them. So notice there's something about the arithmetic of, um, of exponents that's related to uh, the complexity of what you're asking uh, to be done. These are all when this base is the same. So I'm going to tie this to this complexity idea. The simplest way that we can um, that we can combine elements in math is to add and subtract them. And then if I do repeated addition, like 3 plus 3 uh, plus 3 plus 3, the shortcut to that is just to multiply. It's just to do four threes multiplied together. And a shortcut is one way to think about it. I think of it just as a relationship. So repeated addition is multiplication. And division comes with that. So um, multiplication is kind of a step up in complexity from, from addition. Similarly, if I do repeated multiplication, uh, 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, I could get at that through exponents. Or I might make up a word here and say exponation. Um, exponents are, are powers, right? Like 3 to the 4th. Um, some base to the power of x. And so I have these kind of levels of complexity. And notice that like this multiplication, when I'm multiplying and I'm dealing with exponents, the actual arithmetic I can do is addition to combine them. It kind of shifts down in, in difficulty and level of complexity. So that being said, um, logarithms, since logarithms are exponents, they'll have a similar relationship. So if I had log base b, arbitrary base, of two things multiplied together, I'll just say c times d. Um, that is the same. See how this is multiplication. The logarithm inside, uh, this actually shifts down, the multiplications inside the log, shifts down to addition. In other words, I could take log of the separate pieces and add them together. And similarly, division shifts down to subtraction. Anything that's coming from this numerator, you're just subtracting it instead of multiplying it. Um, let me give you an example of this. Like if I had log base 2 um, of 8, let's say. Well, we know that that's 3 because 2 to the third power is 8. But if I didn't see what it was right away, I could go, you know, I could break this 8 into uh, 2 times 4. I'm sorry, 2 plus, yeah, 2 times 4. <laughs> and uh, with that 2 times 4, then, if I know that this multiplication shifts down to addition, that means that this, I could uh, expand it to say this would be the log same of log base 2 of 2 plus log base 2 of 4. Well, I know log base 2 of 2 is 1. Log base 2 of 4 is 2. 1 plus 2 is 3. So you can break them. You can break them apart. Uh, break apart multiplication. Shift it down to addition. And similarly, uh, division down to subtraction, like we said. And there's one more thing. If I have a exponation or a power going on here, I'm just going to say like c to the f power. That shifts down to to multiplication. That's the same as f times log base b of c. It kind of just comes out and becomes multiplication. And hopefully that makes sense because c to the f power is c times itself f times. You would just be adding an f number of these log base b of c's together. So the practice here is to do what's called expanding and contracting or condensing. So for example, if I had something like log base 4 of 2 plus log base 4 of 32, 
And import this is important to to notice too. The base is the same. Like I can only combine these if the bases are the same. Uh, since this is addition with two separate logs, I could condense it to a single multiplication, two times thirty-two, which would be then log base four of uh, sixty-four. And then I could go to uh, to evaluate that if I if I wanted to. So let's do this with some variables. So here's two uh, statements, and I'm going to, to expand them. Um, so right now they're condensed or uh, combined. And so this is multiplication that's going on here. So that multiplication will expand out to addition. So this would be the same as uh, log base 2 of 6 plus log base 2 of x. And uh, let me point out, like we, we're just writing it this way, log base 2 of 6. Sometimes on the, on the quizzes in WAMAP, it kind of prefers you to put parentheses around like this. I think if you enter it without the parentheses, you, you can, you'll can you still get credit for it. It's equivalent, but you might get something that says syntax error. And that's just a goof with the program. All right, let's do this next one. Uh, log base 5 of x cubed times x to the 6th. So those two things are multiplied together. So it would be log base 5 of x cubed plus log base 5 of y to the 6th. And now I can actually keep going from here because now that now I have these exponents involved and exponents will shift down to multiplication. So this would be the same as three log base five of X plus six log base five of Y. And these are just exercises just to get us practicing um, doing this sort of manipulation and thinking about these relationships. All right, two more to uh, to expand. So I have natural log. Uh, natural log is just log base e, so all these these same rules apply. So notice I have natural log of a times b to the fifth divided by uh, square root of three of c. And so I have two terms here that are multiplied together, and one term that's divided. So this term that's divided, that's going to be that piece is going to be subtracted. The other pieces will be added. So let me break it up. What I have so far: natural log of a plus uh, natural log of b to the fifth minus uh, natural log of the cube root of c. And so now this one's fine. I don't have any exponents. This is a b to the fifth. So I can shift that exponent down to multiplication, five times natural log of b minus. Now the cube root is the same as uh, taking to the one third power. So this would be the one one third times natural log of c. So notice anything that was negative had come from the denominator. Anything that was positive came from the numerator. All right, so let's do similar thinking on this. Now here, this this x plus y, this actually is one unit. This this thing I can't break up. If you think back to that layers thing that I did uh, before, I don't have anywhere to shift down to from addition. So that is its own thing. So I have this times that divided by that divided by that. Anything from the coming from the numerator is going to be positive plus log base eight squared y. Anything coming from the denominator will be negative. So net minus uh, log base eight a to the fifth, and then minus um, make a little room here log base eight z cubed. Again, these two pieces down here were both negative. These two pieces that were up here were positive. Now I'll deal with these exponents. Bring out that 2, 2, uh, log base 8 of x plus y plus, this is a 1 half power, y to the 1 half. So 1 half log base 5 of y, bring out that 5, minus 5, log base 8 of a, bring out that 3, that cubing, minus 3 log base 8 of z. All right, so let's just do a couple examples of going the other direction. In other words, I'm going to give you the expanded form, uh, and then we, we need to condense it down. All right, so here I have these three terms. I can see there's three of them. Um, I know that my whole thing is going to be a log base 4. This will be an x cubed, and it's positive, so it's going to go in the numerator. 
this would be a, a y to the one half, which is square to y. It's also positive, so that's going to go in the numerator as well. And then this one, uh, the 9, this is negative, so it's going to go to the denominator. And there it is. And, uh, you know, it's interesting is that negative 9, you know, the reason why this, when you subtract, you go, it's going to the no denominator is because you could say I'm taking this, this x minus y, and this whole negative 9 is, is coming up in here. So it's to a negative power, which flips it and sends it to the denominator. That's why subtracting uh, goes to the denominator, because that's what negative exponent. So this actually also gives us a super powerful tool. Um, so for example, if I wanted to know what log base 7 of 153 is, um, I kind of am out of luck. Like, if, like, let me look at my calculator for a sec. And as I peek at my calculator, I, I have a log button, which is log base 10. I have a natural log button, which is log base E. I don't have a log base 7 button. But I want to go like 7 to some power and get 153. So that's too big. That's too small. I could do guess and check, right? I could go like maybe 7.5. Um, I'm sorry, 7 to the 2.5. That's a little small, but I could keep going and kind of get closer and closer to it. But this tool actually gives me a lot of power, um, these tools over here. So let me do a little manipulation. I'm going to set this equal to y. Now, you're not going to have to solve these this way that I'm about to do it every time. I'm just doing this to show you why it works, and we'll get to a rule that you can use that's pretty straightforward. So first thing I'm going to do with this is rewrite it. So I'm going to say uh, 7 to the y power must equal 153. And at first glance, that doesn't seem to help me very much. Um, but I think what I'll do is I'll take advantage of that log base 10, because I have a button for that. And I will log base 10 both sides. And I made that choice because I have a log base 10 button. I could use natural log. I could have natural log both sides. Um, and I'm just showing both at the both at the same time and to, to get to a point at the end. So I think that what I can do here, since I have this like 7 to a y power, I can use this relationship and, and bring the y out. Turn it, shift it down to multiplication. So I have y times log 7 equals log 153. And notice if I did that over here, I'd have y times natural log of 7 equals natural log of 153. And now log 7 is just a number. I just don't, I, oh, I could actually do that in my calculator. And log 153 is a number too. So to figure out what y is, how about I just uh, multiply both sides by log 7? And over here, I'd, I'd you know, divide both sides by natural log of 7. I think I, I might have said multiply, I meant divide. So that means that y will equal log of 153 divided by log of 7. Or natural log of 153 divided by natural log of 7. All right, let me try that on my calculator and see what happens. So log of 153, close off the parentheses, divide by log... 7. 2.58 blah blah blah. So that's actually, you know, I was getting closer to it with a 2.5. Remember what we were trying to solve was 7 to what power is 153? So if I go 7 to the power to the power of this answer I just got, it is 153. This gives it to me. And you know how I ran that that kind of parallel thing on the other side with natural log? That means I could go, I could get it by going natural log of 153 close off the parentheses, and divide by natural log of 7. I get the same answer. So I'm going to say about 2.585. Notice what happened. And uh, this would happen, like, even if we didn't have 7 and 153, if we had different numbers here, we'd still end up with log of this, whatever was here, divided by log of the base. Or natural log of whatever was there, that input, divided by natural log of the base. So when we went to evaluate this, we went through some steps. 
doody doody do and the steps would always be the same no matter what the numbers are and we ended up with log of 153 divided by log of 7. And now our choice to use log base 10 was, was our choice. It was arbitrary. So we could have chosen, you know, uh, log 9, but we don't have a log 9 button on the calculator. That doesn't, it doesn't help us to make that choice. Um, but we could have used natural log. We have that, that button and that, that helps us. So either of those are true. And this actually gives us a really great relationship, which is called the change of base. Uh, change of base relationship. And change of base basically tells us if I have a uh, log base B of some number of A, that's equivalent to log base C of A divided by log base C of B. And there's some kind of nice symmetry up here. Notice like the, the subscript goes to the bottom, the regular script goes to the top, like the A. And the C, don't let the C fool you, the C is arbitrary. This C is any, any number you want it to be because it's not mentioned before, like it comes out of nowhere. So you can use log base 10, you can use natural log, but I would use one of those because, you know, those are the buttons I have in my calculator for it. So now using this change of base formula, I can evaluate anything that gets thrown at me in logarithms. Like if you wanted to know what log base 4 of 193 was, well, I use that change of base formula, and I know well, that's the same as natural log of 193 divided by natural log of 4. Or if you don't want to use natural log, you could say uh, log base 10 of 193 divided by log base 10 of 4. And you do that on your calculator. Um, I forgot what my numbers were. I'm so excited. Uh, one, 193 and 4. 93, do not forget to close off the parentheses, divided by, and I'm using natural log, 4, use the same thing as well, 3.796. So what this is telling me is if I go 4 to that power, and I'm not going to copy it, I'm just going to truncate it. So 3.7962 should be about 193. I'll be a little bit off because I didn't use the exact number, but it's pretty darn close. Great, so that's the change of base formula. Uh, easy to use and a very, very, very uh, important tool for us so that we can evaluate these. All right, give those uh, practice problems a try. Message me with any questions that you have.